This is the first in a series of videos about the binary number system. You'll see how positive whole numbers can be represented in binary and how to convert from base 10 to binary and back again. In the following videos you'll see how to represent negative numbers in binary using sign and magnitude notation and a method known as two's complement. Later you'll also see how fractional numbers are represented using floating point notation. But let's start at the beginning. The binary number system is fundamental to the operation of the modern digital computer. Binary is also known as the base 2 number system. Understanding the base 10 system, which is sometimes called the decimal system or denary, will help you to understand binary and how to convert numbers from one base to another. In base 10 we have 10 shapes representing the numbers 0 to 9. The concept of zero is a very important aspect of this system. These shapes are known as digits. Why base 10? Probably because most of us have 10 fingers on our hands. Any whole number can be represented using combinations of these digits. The bigger the number, the more of these digits we're going to need. We could go on counting forever. The positions of the digits mean something. This number system is known as a positional number system. Consider the number 537. From a very young age you were probably taught that each digit has a place value. 537 is actually 5 times 100 plus 3 times 10 plus 7 times 1. For bigger numbers we could use more place values. If we have zeros underneath these higher place values, they're insignificant, so this is still the number 537. In base 2, namely binary, we have only two shapes, representing 0 and 1. These binary digits are known as bits for short. Any number can be represented using combinations of bits. Why base 2? Because inside a computer, if there's an electrical voltage on a wire, the wire is transmitting a 1. If there's no voltage, the wire is transmitting 0. If a transistor on a microchip is switched on, it's storing a 1. If it's off, it's storing a 0. For an electronic computer, the binary number system is a natural fit. The positions of the bits also mean something in binary. Binary is also a positional number system. Here's an 8-bit binary number. Each bit has a place value, but unlike base 10, in which these place values increase from right to left in powers of 10, these are increasing in powers of 2. Each place value is double that of the previous place value. What we have now, then, is a handy little gadget that we can use to convert a binary number into denary. This binary number is comprised of 0 times 128 plus 0 times 64 plus 1 times 32 plus 1 times 16 plus 0 times 8 plus 1 times 4 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 times 1. This binary number is 53 in base 10. Let's see another example. This binary number is 0 times 128 plus 1 times 64 plus no 32s, 1 times 16, 1 times 8, no 4s, 1 times 2 and no 1s. This is 90. And another example. Notice we've got 8 1s this time. So we have 1 times 128 plus 1 times 64, 1 times 32, 1 times 16, an 8, a 4, a 2, and a 1. 
This is 255. This is actually the largest binary number that we can represent using 8 bits. Let's not forget that 0 is a number as well. This is 0 in 8-bit binary. If you're asked to perform a conversion in an examination, for example to convert this binary number into denary, you will probably be required to show your working. The correct way to show your working is like this. Notice I show the answer at the end. It's also conventional to include a little subscript at the end of each number just to indicate which number base it is in. So we're saying that 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0 in base 2 is equal to 26 in base 10. If you'd like to practice some of these yourself, here are some examples you can give a try. I'll show you the solutions in just a moment. If you want to give them a go, pause the video now. And here are the answers. Now, if you're asked to convert from denary to binary, we use the same gadget but the method is slightly different. The first thing we have to do is decide where we're going to place the first one. Starting from left to right, if we were to place a 1 underneath 128, the number would be at least 128, which is too big. So we might try a 1 underneath 64. 64 is still bigger than 49, so we might try a 1 underneath 32. 32 is less than 49, so we're going to put a 1 here, and we know we need to add something else to it. So we'll try a 1 underneath the next place value, which is 16. 32 plus 16 is 48. We are below the target, so we can add something else to this. If we were to place a 1 underneath the 8, 32 plus 16 plus 8 is too big, so we won't place the 1 here. Let's try it underneath the 4. 32 plus 16 plus 4 is still too big, so let's try the 1 underneath the 2. 32 plus 16 plus 2 is 50, it's still too big, so let's try the next position along. 32 plus 16 plus 1 is 49, we've found the target value. We know where the 1s go, all we have to do now is fill the gaps with zeros. So there it is, 49 in base 10 is equivalent to double zero, double one, triple zero, one in base 2. Here's some practice you can try yourself. Remember, you have to show your working. I'll show you the solutions in just a moment. If you want to give them a go, pause the video now. And here are the answers. To finish off, consider this question. What is the biggest denary number that you can represent in binary using 8 bits? Well, we've already seen it's 8 ones, which works out to 255. But now consider this question. How many different denary numbers can you represent in binary using 8 bits? Remember, we can represent all of the binary numbers from 1 to 255. That's 255 different values. But we mustn't forget, 0 is a value as well. So the answer to this question is 256. And I want you to notice that 2 to the power 8 is 256. 2 to the power of the number of bits that you're using to encode a binary number will tell you how many values you can encode using that many bits. We'll talk about the importance of that in a later video.